On Point with Craig's Investment Partners. The information provided here is general in nature. It's not financial advice. It doesn't take into account your financial situation, objectives, goals or risk tolerance. All investments are subject to risks and none are guaranteed. So before you make any investment decisions, we recommend you contact an investment advisor. For more information about our services in that regard, you can go to our website, which is craigsip.com. Welcome to On Point. I'm Mark Lister, Investment Director at Craig's Investment Partners, and I'll be talking about a range of topics, including economics, portfolio strategy, investor education, and anything else that's happening out there in financial markets. Morning, team. Hope you're all well. I wanted to talk today about one of my least favorite share market sayings, and that is when people make the analogy between the share market and a casino. That really bothers me because while some traders might treat their portfolio as if it's a sports betting account or similar, genuine investors will know that this comparison could not be further from the truth. While gambling and investing both involve risking your capital in the hope of making future profits, the share market is the complete opposite of a casino in one really important way. And that's because at the casino, no matter the game, the odds are always tilted in favour of the house. You know, you might think you're doing okay, you might get lucky a few times, but the truth is, for the vast bulk of us, the more time you spend in the casino, the greater your chances of losing. And that's the complete opposite of the share market, because when it comes to investing in shares or businesses, uh, the longer you stay, the better your odds are of success. I looked back at historic returns for the S&P 500 index in the US, which is the key share market index over there. And you can get data going all the way back to the 1800s. I just started at 1900, so that's 123 years worth of returns. Thought that's a, a pretty good sample size. And when I looked back at the daily returns, uh, and I could get those going back, I think, as far as 1928 for each individual day, so that's still almost 100 years worth of data. You look at all of those daily returns, the US share market has been up 52% of the time. So that's not fantastic odds. You know, um, better than even, but only just. So long story short, if you want to know what the market's going to do on any given day, tonight, tomorrow, uh, next Thursday, you may as well flip a coin. You know, your odds are pretty much the same. However, as we increase that holding period from daily to monthly, which is still very, very short term, uh, but daily to monthly, your probability jumps uh, to 59%. You've got a 59% chance of being up. Still not hugely compelling, uh, but that's still a very short term view. When we look at rolling 12 month periods, so you invest your, move your investment time horizon to one year, that's when things start to get interesting. The likelihood of a positive return then shoots up to 73%. You know, almost three quarters of the time, you'll be up if you invest and hold uh, point to point for a 12 month period. Now, one year is still far too short to be considering considered as the time frame of a long term investor. But when you look at holding periods of five years or more, that's when you really start to see the power of long term investing and patience, uh, the historic likelihood of a positive return over five year periods improves to 89%. So much, much better than than with that short term view. Over 10 year periods, it goes as high as 97%. And if you spent a decade in a casino, I'm not sure you'd have a, a ch much chance of coming out with anything at all, let alone a 97% chance of being better off. So there is quite a big difference between the share market and the casino. Some of you will be thinking, well, hang on, 97%, what happened to those 3% of times? Those are the periods where you would have experienced a loss when holding over 10 years. And they relate to two quite unique times in history. Because remember, this is going back to uh, 1900. One of those times is if you bought US shares uh, at the end of the 1920s, you know, 1928, 1929, that period preceded the Great Depression. You know, the 1930s were not a fantastic time for investment returns or, or economic growth uh, full stop. So one of those times when you uh, would have been unlucky enough to, to have... Um, 
been underwater, not dramatically, you wouldn't have lost all your money, but you just wouldn't have made a, a positive return. You would have made a, a small negative return. One of those times would have been if you invested in uh, the late 1920s. The other time would be if you made your investment in the late 1990s. And some of you will remember that period, 98, 99, the peak of the dot-com boom, uh, internet shares growing through the roof. Uh, that obviously all came crashing down with the recession and the, the share market decline of the early 2000s. So those are two periods, quite rare. You know, We've only seen them twice in the last 120 odd years, quite unique, but they can happen. When we extend our, our investment timeframe or our holding period to 15 years, then the proportion of positive returns increases to 100%. So people that have invested with that sort of time frame. They've never seen a loss point to point. Uh, this is in nominal terms. I know there will be people out there that are saying, hang on, what about when we account for inflation? What about the 1970s where share prices went up, house prices went up, but after inflation, both of those things still lagged. And that's absolutely true. That's probably another another report and another episode. And I have um, I have actually recorded episodes and wrote written reports about the difference between nominal returns and real returns. So go back through the, the list of episodes at that one, because there have been periods through history where uh, you, you might think you've done well in terms of your investing experience, but when you account for inflation, you haven't done so well. But uh, back to my original story, uh, when I look at New Zealand uh, shares and, and the, the history of the New Zealand share market, and you can get data going back to the, the mid-1960s for the New Zealand market, all the possible five-year holding periods, um, returns were positive 83% of the time. So those numbers are actually quite similar to what we saw in uh, the US, uh, remarkably similar actually. And when we look at 10-year uh, blocks, rolling 10-year blocks, 100% uh, of the time New Zealand shares have been up, even if you invested uh, right at the peak um, uh, before the 87 crash over 10 years, you still were up slightly. So I think that does just remind us that while returns can be hugely volatile, and while you can find yourself sitting on losses for an extended period, depending on when you started, you know, if you're unlucky enough to buy or start investing right at the top of the market, you, you could be sitting on losses for, for years in some cases. However, uh, the key point I want to make is that unlike the casino, the longer your investment time horizon, the more the odds swing back into your favour. So I hate that analogy. Uh, the share market is nothing like a casino. It does reward patience and it gives back in spades to those of us who stick around long enough to reap the benefits. As always, I think it's really important. And another lesson from those statistics, particularly that 3% of times in the US when you would have been down over a 10-year period, that is that is just a reminder that uh, you should stagger your way into markets. You know, if you've got some capital set aside and you want to put it into the market, the beauty with shares is that you don't have to invest it all on one day. You know, if you've got a, a sum of money and you want to get into the property market, you sort of have to be all in right at once. And if you get your timing wrong, that can hurt you. You know, if you'd bought that first investment property or, or bought your first home in November 2021, uh, you were all in and you would have found yourself down 20% um, 18 months later. But the beauty with investing in financial assets, whether it's shares, whether it's fixed income, whether you're doing it via direct holdings or managed funds or KiwiSaver or whatever, is you can cut that lump sum up into chunks and you can invest it um, over a period of six months or 12 months or, or even longer. So if markets are at a point where you think, well, are they somewhere near the top? You know, are, are, is everyone too optimistic? Could this be close to one of those times when it's not a great time to invest? Well, you don't have to go in boots and all. You can just invest some of your money and then invest a little bit more in two weeks' time, one month's time, three months' time, whatever whatever suits you or whatever your advisor recommends, and then you will take some of that timing risk out of the picture. So hopefully that's useful. I guess my key point is that uh, the share market is fantastic for long-term investors and quite unlike uh, gambling or the casino, the longer you stay, the more the odds will swing into your favour. All right, thanks team. Thanks for listening. We'll talk again soon.